This is test number two, question number five on the practice test. And the question is, <clears throat> arrange the following elements in order of decreasing, again underlined, ionization energy. So we're going to have to go backwards. And uh, 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 in other words, I'm going to go from the highest ionization energy to the lowest. And I can ask, I'm going to ask this question uh, one of the reasons this is going to be easy to answer is that you'll note this is only the second row. So if I ask this question, it's going to be about, you know, about the second or third row where the following is true, because I don't expect anybody to memorize all the ionization energies of all the elements. You just need to be able to understand the trend, and there is a very easily understood trend. And so this one you're going to work out on scratch paper. Um, the following, we're just, I, I would make a little graph like this, uh, where this is um, ionization energy, which is the amount of work needed to be done to remove the outermost electron. And with this is going to be the elements. And the, let's take the second row. It starts with lithium. go through and uh, note what happens as we, uh, as we go through and, and remove the electrons and, and explain why, understand why. So we'll take lithium as a starting point. It takes a certain amount of work to remove that uh, 2s electron. And now as I proceed from lithium to beryllium, uh, the same thing that causes the contraction in the size is, uh, is going to cause the second electron to be held more tightly. We have now two electrons above a closed shell uh, of heat, uh, of core electron. And the core electrons are going to screen the nuclear charge, uh, the electro outer electrons, the valence electrons from the inner clear charge. And so that is the same. The same core electrons exist as we go entirely across the row. So as I go from left to right across the row, I'm having an increase in nuclear charge that's, that's attracting the electrons. And so it's going to take more work to remove the second electron, the beryllium electron, than it did to remove the lithium electron, because now I have one more nuclear charge same amount of shielding. Now, as I proceed from beryllium to uh, boron, something is changing. Uh, it's the nature of the electron. So we have to understand uh, I have 2s electrons and then I have 2p electrons, which uh, when there's a multi-electron atom due to the interactions with the electrons, the Within a shell, the, 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 the energy of the, the different subshells is now uh, different. And it's the, the two p electrons are higher in energy than the two s electrons. And so, uh, so I've got this situation here. That is boron. Well, I'm removing a p electron now. That it, it is spatially extended. It's further away from the nucleus because of the, the, the p orbitals look like sort of dumbbells. It has a node at the nucleus and um, uh, like this. So it's got electron density, which is mostly uh, exterior from the nucleus rather than an s electron. So it, it's going to be more easily removed. And so that is going to compensate for the increase in nuclear charge and sort of a compromise between the two. But there is a decrease for this reason. It takes less energy to remove a, a, a p electron than it does to remove an s electron. Okay, And so now that we've got that taken care of, we need to go from boron to carbon. We've already paid the piper. We've already taken care of the fact that carbon is another uh, a p electron. 
And so there's going to be an increase in the ionization energy, and it is going to go above that of the beryllium. And so now as I go from carbon to nitrogen, the same thing applies. I've got an increase in nuclear charge, and that is going to make it, uh, I'm going to have another trend here where I'm increasing the amount of ionization energy. And now as I go from nitrogen to oxygen, and this is the next feature that you have to understand, and, and then the trend makes perfect sense. At this point, I can start pairing up electrons. And now, a, 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 I'm removing an electron that's going to be paired. Now, putting two electrons in the same orbital means they have to occupy the same space. The only way that can happen without violating the Pauli exclusion principle is that there's quantum numbers are not all the same, so they have to be at opposite spin. Now, that may enable them both to occupy the same space, but there's still repulsion. They're negatively charged. It's called poly repulsion. Well, so there's a certain amount of energy or work that has to be done in excess of, uh, uh, that to, to overcome that poly repulsion. And so we're getting, uh, uh, we're, we're getting that energy back when we have to go to remove this electron, and so there's a decrease in the ionization energy as we go from nitrogen to oxygen. And now we're from oxygen to fluorine, we've already paid the price, because here's fluorine. Well, now I've already paid the price for this. So now we're back to the old trend, increasing nuclear charge, and so there's an increase. And the fluorine, like, like we realized when we went from more on the carbon is that it's going to be greater than the ionization energy of nitrogen. So fluorine is here. And that is the trend we need to have in order to answer this question. Let's look at it. It looks sort of like a stock market thing, which would appear to be random. But it, uh, once we understand <clears throat> the nature of the electron that's being removed and uh, the, the nature of the increase in charge because of the increased nuclear charge, uh, this trend makes perfect sense. And so this is what I want you to do on scratch paper. Now we can easily answer the question. We're going to arrange this in order of decreasing ionization energy. Which one in our list has the highest ionization energy? Well, that, according to Mr. Finger, is fluorine. Okay, so now after fluorine, which one's next is going to be nitrogen? and then after nitrogen, oxygen, and then after oxygen, um, it's going to be beryllium, and after beryllium, boron, and after boron, lithium. So now we can write that down, and this, is, this would be the way of answering it. So it's going to be fluorine is greater than Nitrogen is greater than oxygen is greater than um, uh, beryllium is greater than uh, beryllium, by the way, has an E after it, is greater than boron, which is greater than lithium. So 